In this video, we're going to take a look at something called the quadratic parent function. The objective is that by the end of this video, you should be able to describe the quadratic function as it looks like in an equation, graph, and table. You should be able to state its symmetry and vertex, axis symmetry that is, and you should be able to state its domain and its range. The quadratic parent function is the equation y is equal to x to the second power x to the second power is the part that makes it a quadratic. We're going to describe a graph of the quadratic parent function by using our graphing calculators. So we get our graphing calculators on, we hit the y equals button in the upper left hand corner, and we'll type in x exponent button above your divide by button, and then 2. So now we have the equation y is equal to x to the second power, which is the quadratic parent function, and when we hit the graph button, it graphs the function for us. What I'd like you to notice about the quadratic parent function is that its vertex is at the origin. It's at the point zero, zero. So the U-shape comes down, hits a lowest point at zero, zero, and then goes back up. What I'd also like you to notice is that the graph is split up and down through the middle by the Y-axis, or the line X equals zero. We can take a look at the table of a quadratic parent function by hitting second, and then graph. And I'm going to start my table at zero. So let's go back to the table here. And what I'd like you to notice is that the y values are equal to the square of all of the x values. In other words, one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, and so on. So go ahead and state the axis of symmetry and the vertex of the quadratic parent function. Pause the video, work it out, and press play when you're ready to see the answer. The axis of symmetry is the line that splits the quadratic straight down the middle. So it's this line right here. It should be straight on top of the y-axis. And that line is the line x is equal to 0. You could also say the axis of symmetry is the y-axis. The vertex is at the origin. It's at the point 0, 0. Or you could say the origin. So which the following incorrectly, notice that's a key, incorrectly, describes the quadratic parent function. Please pause the video, see if you can figure out which answer it is, and press play to see the answer. Answer choice A says its vertex, x-intercept, and y-intercepts are all the same. Well, its vertex is at the point 0, 0. That's also where it hits the x-axis, so its vertex and x-intercept are the same. You'll notice that is also where it crosses the y-axis. So that's also where the y-axis intercept is. So the vertex x-intercept and y-intercept are all the same, which means that A is a correct description. So A is not the answer choice because they're wanting us to find the incorrect description. Its vertex is at the origin. So B is also a correct description. C, it is, it's, <laughs> It is symmetric about the x-axis. Well, since the x, well, no, that doesn't quite work. The y-axis is the axis of symmetry, not the x-axis. So it kind of looks like C might be the answer choice. D says it's symmetric about the y-axis, and it is symmetric about the y-axis because the left-hand side of the parabola is the same as the right-hand side. They're mirror images of each other across the y-axis. So D is correct, which means C is the only incorrect description of the quadratic. Our next question is going to ask us to state the domain and range of the quadratic parent function. And you may not have seen the word domain and range before, but domain are all of your x values. And the range are all of your y values. Another way to put it is the domain is how far to the left and how far to the right the graph goes. The range tells us how far down and how far up the graph goes. Let's do the domain first. 
Since the domain are the x values, we need to figure out how far to the left the graph goes. Now notice our graph stops. There isn't a point at the end. So it's understood that there are arrows. It's understood that the graph keeps on going on forever if there are not points put there. So if they put like a dot, then it'd mean it stops. But without that dot, it's understood that there's an arrow there. So the graph goes to the left forever. So it goes forever to the left. Let's follow it along to the right. If we follow it along to the right, we notice we hit another arrow and the graph is going on forever and ever and ever, kind of up and to the right. So the graph is going to go forever to the right. Since the graph goes forever to the left and forever to the right, the domain is stated to be all real numbers. Now, if you just want to memorize it, that's fine. The domain of the quadratic function, parent function, excuse me, is all real numbers. And you can kind of notice that because if it goes forever left and forever right, it'll cover every single value along the x-axis. Okay, the range of the graph. Now, the range is going to be a bit different because you notice the lowest point on the graph, let's do this in red, so we'll do the range in red. The lowest point on the graph is zero. And then if we follow the graph up, we hit an arrow, which means it goes up forever. This means that the range is from zero on. So y is gonna be bigger than or equal to zero, kind of a weird way to put it. Or for the purposes of this video, they'll say all real numbers bigger than zero. And that's because all of the y values on the graph are bigger than zero. Go ahead and work this problem out on your own, pressing pause, and press play when you're ready to see the answer. The first answer choice states that the domain is the set of all non-negative numbers. That's almost true, but not completely true, because the domain does include negative numbers. We know that because the graph goes forever to the left. So A is not correct. Now, notice the question this time asks which of the following correctly describes the domain of the quadratic parent function. B says the domain is the set of all real numbers. That's true because it goes forever to the left and forever to the right. So B is correct. C says the domain is the set of all real numbers greater than negative three, but less than three. That's not true because it includes numbers that go further to the left than negative three and further to the right than three. It keeps on going on forever left and forever right. D is similar. The domain is the set of all real numbers bigger than zero or less than six. So that's not correct either. B is the correct answer choice for the domain of the quadratic parent function. Here's another question. This one's asking about the range. Please go ahead and pause the video, work it out. Press play when you're ready to see the answer. This asks which of the following correctly describes the range of the quadratic parent function. The range is all real numbers that are bigger than or equal to zero. Now, if we look at this, the way it's worded is going to be a little bit weird. A says the range is a set of all non-negative numbers, and that is true because zero and going up, notice the graph keeps on going up forever, would mean that we are including all of the non-negative numbers. So A would be the correct answer choice. Notice it says which of the following correctly describes. B says the range is a set of all real numbers. That's not true because we don't include the negatives. C, the range that restricts us from negative three to three. And D says from zero to six, that's not true either because the graph starts at zero and goes up forever. 